so I wasn't expecting like super nice results but um, these are quite shocking to be honest I have no idea Hi, I'm Scarlett and I'm starting a permaculture project here on the east coast of Mallorca. Follow along as I document the whole process of transforming this derelict piece of land into a food forest. Today I'm going to talk about the results of the soil analysis that I just got back from the lab and also about the last things I'm going to do uh, in year 2021 because I am leaving for Switzerland tomorrow which is the country I'm from for everybody who doesn't know me yet. It is quite chilly today and windy, I hope you can hear me well. We had some very strange weather appearances in the last couple of weeks including a uh, medicane uh, which is a mediterranean hurricane and a lot of rain and wind Let's talk about the results of the soil analysis that I just got back from the lab. As you know, I've been um, sending some soil samples in a couple of weeks ago and I knew that the soil quality wouldn't be very good because I can tell about the plant growth and just the general look of the plants that are growing here. They're in a very miserable condition and um, so I wasn't expecting like super nice results, but um, these are quite shocking to be honest. Especially the pH value is just over the top. The ideal pH value for growing plants is somewhere between 6.3 and 7.3. Um, everything between you know 7.3 up to 8 is called alkaline soil. And the soil on this property is uh, 8.13, so it's even higher than the official scale of um, soil pH. So let's dive into this topic of soil health and um, pH a little bit deeper. I'm not an expert in soil biology, but I will share what I have researched and what I will be doing to amend the soil on this property. First thing we have to figure out is why is the pH value important for plant growth? Soil pH is considered a master variable in soil as it affects many chemical processes. The availability of many plants nutrients in soils including iron, zinc, copper and manganese is reduced in alkaline soil. Also there is a decrease in microorganisms living in the soil. 
Luckily, many plants have adapted to thrive at the pH value outside the ideal pH range. The next question I've been asking myself was, so how come there is such an extreme pH on this property? Alkaline soil can be natural, caused by the weathering of natural minerals like calcium carbonate or calcium bicarbonate in the ground. But alkaline soil can also have a range of man-made causes, which means we can rectify them. One of the reasons could be poor drainage. If the moisture can't filter through the soil, salts are raising up to the surface when the water evaporates. Another issue can be massive soil erosion, which I think is the cause here on this property, because I definitely don't have any drainage issues. It has been raining all day yesterday and today, and I don't see any puddle of water anywhere. So this is definitely not it. The erosion, I can tell just by looking at the rocks and also at the topography of the property, which is uh, on a slope. And on the bottom of this property, there is a torrent, which is some kind of a natural storm drain. So whenever it rains, the water just flows directly from the property into the torrent and directly into the sea. So all the nutrients from the soil get lost into the ocean, which is terrible and very inefficient. You can even tell that in the port when it rains a lot, the whole water turns into a reddish color, red like the color of this soil. Over time there is barely any topsoil left and the poor vegetation doesn't add enough organic matter to it to regenerate the soil. The natural part, I can't do a lot about it, so I'll just have to make sure I can reverse the man-made causes of this alkaline soil. Alkaline soils are often seen in arid or dry environments because when it rains, there are not enough plants that soak up the water, not enough roots to let the water sink into the ground, and not enough organic matter to act as a sponge and hold back the nutrients or to regenerate the soil. And all that is left in the end is just the subsoil. This problem can easily be solved with the methods of permaculture. So the big question is, what can and will I do to improve the soil quality and to lower the pH value of this soil? Humans are always trying to fix things, and I too intend to rectify the man-made causes of this poor soil. But the easiest and most natural thing to do is just to choose the right plants for your circumstances. Even if improved, the soil here will always be on the alkaline spectrum. So the wise thing to do is to simply accept the limitations and grow the plants suited to where we live. Luckily there is one tree I really really like and just got to know recently, which is the strawberry tree. And I'm really happy that this tree actually does tolerate an alkaline soil, so this will be my first plant I will choose. The pH of an alkaline soil can be reduced chemically by adding acidifying agents like elemental sulfur. It slowly oxidizes in soil to form sulfuric acid. This is a quite expensive but quick fix to adjust the pH value, however it does not fix the source of the problem. So after a couple of years you will have to add more elemental sulfur each time, unless you match this measure with some more sustainable ones. I will start by adding lots of organic matter, preferably materials with a lower pH value, like pine needles or coffee grounds. Instead of focusing on changing the pH value, I will focus on making nutrients available in the soil for plants and microorganisms. So I will cover the ground with manure and add as much compost as I can find. I'll be planting cover crops to let water sink in and to create organic matter. 
and I'll mulch with wood chips and pine needles for the same reason. This will slowly and gently lower the pH value over time, but most importantly, it will help our plants to grow. But this wouldn't help without making some constructions that actually hold the soil in place and prevent further soil erosion because then the compost just would, you know, end up in the sea like they do now. So the next or the previous step before I add compost will be to make some constructions like swales or even maybe some terraces that hold the soil in place. After I got the soil tested, I also had a meeting with my architect and he tested the air quality. Compared to the soil, the air is splendid and as clean as air can be. So at least there's some good news. some more things. I know I said I would wait with planting before I finalize the contract but I have been gifted a couple of plants that would die if uh, I would leave them at home for the next month that I'm going to be in Switzerland so I'll just you know put them in the ground and hope they will survive until the next year. Besides the pomegranate tree I already have been planting an aloe vera that I got as a gift. And today I will add my new Mallorquin favorite, which is the Fonol Marie um, sea fennel, which is a very cool and very tolerant plant. So I think this will survive without any problems, even with this soil quality because it naturally grows on the cliffs next to the sea. It tolerates salt, dryness and loves direct sunlight. So I'll make sure I'll put it in the sunniest spot I can find. And then I got another gift which is not looking very beautiful now but it is also one of the things I love to eat. You want to guess what it is? Well, I couldn't tell if I wouldn't know. It is a capers bush. I've got these cuttings from the neighbor of my landlord. Thank you again for all these nice plant gifts. I really love them. And I'll see how if I can manage to make them grow. I have no idea. I have never planted capers before but and also I would have loved to um, let the roots establish a little bit more. Uh, they used to be in water before I transported them here. Um, and they haven't uh, developed any roots yet. But uh, there is a lot more rain to come next week, so I hope they will just do fine. They do like a very sunny spot, so I think in front of this wall they will just be very, very happy. Oh, and I almost forgot the Romero um, I bought to use in my kitchen. And yeah, I'll just put it somewhere so it won't die. <laughs> 